Great day everyone, this is Jason Santos and for today let's continue the discussion of labor economics. We are already on lesson 5, human capital. And here are the things that we will be covering. We have human capital, the theory, optimal human capital investment, and human capital in Philippine context. So as we always start, let's have a quick quote from Bill Gates and according to him, in the long run, your human capital is your main base of competition. Your leading indicator of where you're going to be 20 years from now is how well you're doing in your education system. So this is what uh, Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world, has said when it comes to human capital. Human capital refers to the economic value of the unique sets of abilities and acquired skills of a worker. People bring into the labor market a unique set of abilities and acquired skills as human capital. Workers add their stock of human capital throughout their lives, especially through formal education and on-the-job experience. So this is a graphical representation of what makes up human capital. So it takes education and training, development of skills, both hard and soft skills, their health and well-being, the experience that they have accumulated and gathered from working maybe in various jobs or on one field, gaining mastery, their personality, how they are loyal to the company, and their intelligence and emotional intelligence. So when we also talk of human capital, we have to remember that um, there are several um, things that are very important, such as uh, education. This is strongly correlated with labor force participation rates. And when the countries have lower education, the human capital will also be lower for these countries. Unemployment rates would be higher if a country has lower education uh, rate. And then for the earnings, there is a strong positive correlation. What that means is that when you look at the unemployment rates, it relates to the education that the that country has. So if the education is not that strong, unemployment rates are higher, therefore there is a relationship between the two factors, vice versa. So human capital theory posits that human beings can increase their productive capacity through greater education and skills training. Critics of the theory argue that it is flawed, overly simplistic, and confounds labor with capital. In the 1960s, economists Gary Becker and Theodore Schultz pointed out that education and training were investments that could add to productivity. As the world accumulated, more and more physical capital, the opportunity cost of going to school declined. Education became an increasingly important component of the workforce. The term was also adopted by the corporate finance and became part of intellectual capital and more broadly as human capital. So human capital as an investment, here's the basic model. Investments in human capital are made to improve productivity and earnings. So we have skills, health, knowledge, and experience. And um, remember, I have shown you earlier what makes up human capital. There are a lot of things actually apart from these basic um, posits or things that we have highlighted here. Uh, one must ask or the country must ask, is the investment worthwhile? Are we investing in the right education, the right skills and training? Is it paying off um, properly in terms of economic growth? Costs incurred with the expectation of future benefits, thus expected benefits, must exceed cost. Um, we also know that technology is rapidly advancing the uh, skill frontier. Future workforce will need to be ready for highly skilled jobs for countries to be prepared. So investing in human capital such as health skills, knowledge, and experience, and without human capital, it will be impossible to sustain growth or compete in global economy. Optimal human capital investment 
is determined by comparing the costs and benefits of having an additional year of education. So using the following concept, let's look at the marginal cost and benefits of education and the rate of return on investment in education. Human capital investment, uh, there are in human capital investment, there are actually several costs. The cost of acquiring or adding to human cop, uh, capital fall into mainly three categories. The first is uh, out-of-pocket or direct expenses, meaning the tuition, cost expenditures on books and other supplies of people. Foregone earnings, meaning um, these are salaries that uh, people would have to forego. Okay, let's say one person is already employable because he, he, he or she is above 18, but uh, that person chose to study. So there will be foregone earnings or salaries or income given up for the opportunity cost. And then we also have psychic losses. This occurs because learning is often difficult and tedious for some people. Expected returns to education and training investments are in the form of higher future earnings, increased job satisfaction, more responsibility, autonomy, etc. And then a greater appreciation of non-market activities and interests such as reading hobbies, internet, etc. We also have uh, some benchmark modeling like uh, what is the utility or disutility from education, are the hours of work, uh, work fixed? What are the income streams associated with education? And then individuals can borrow and lend at the real interest rate, perfect capital market. So here we can see an illustration of potential earnings of, let's say, a high school graduate. Um, we can see A, illustration of A, where in a person who quits school after getting her high school diploma can earn uh, work represented uh, wage or rather wage represented by HS from age 18 until retirement. retirement. Or if that person decides to go to college, he or she forgoes the earnings and incurs a cost of H dollars for four years and then earns wage college until retirement so the, the person has two options actually they can either work after high school uh, as again we can see in the wage hs their lifetime earnings will be at this rate or they can go to college and then their earnings will be much higher but they would have to sacrifice four to five years worth of salary and then pay some direct costs. So next, we can also see um, additional uh, portions of the graph which is represented by C and D. Somebody who decides to go to college is represented by D and A or D plus A. But again, they have to give up years worth of salary represented by B and direct cost represented by C. So if area D exceeds all the costs combined, A, B, and C, then it only makes sense to go to college. Thus, we can see at the bottom, if area D is greater than B plus C, then the person should go to college. So now let's also look at human capital as a form of wealth. Because it really is wealth for the economy, wealth for the nation. That's why many progressive uh, countries, if you would root it down, they have really invested heavily in quality education, access to better and quality education. We must remember that human capital refers to wealth which can be directed to accomplish the goals of the nation or the state. And that is why it is important for nations to understand its human capital strength and weaknesses. So human capital, the present value of future earnings of the labor force. In 2020, the Philippines scored 0 0.52 in Human Capital Index or HCI though this is higher than the average among countries in the lower middle income group 
This means that a child born in the Philippines today will likely reach only 52% of his or her own potential come adulthood. So again, number is relatively low, uh, higher. But in reality, if we would try to commensurate that to the percentage of a person um, harnessing his or her full potential, it is still low. Okay? That's why um, countries should really opt or strive on getting a higher human capital percentage. So for this topic, we would have to cut it short and for us to better understand human capital and its implication, uh, different implications rather. I'm leaving you with this assignment and um, answer the following questions. So what is human capital? Why is it con uh, considered as a nation's wealth? What does a country need more? Is it blue collar uh, workers or white collar workers? And then I want you to read this article. The link is below. Uh, these are some of the reasons as to why Philippine human capital ranking has fallen. So you read the article and then give um, your opinion and um, feedback to that article. Okay, with that, thank you so much. I hope you have learned something from this short discussion. And I will see you on the next video.